What's up bros? Welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss. Today we are going to talk about turning MoGraph bakes into actual geometry. Um, if there has ever been a point where you have used dynamics to build something and you kind of want to just lock it in place and you want to turn all those individual elements into geometry and just forget about the dynamics, this is what you need to watch if you want to learn how to do that. Because a lot of times, let's say, um, let's say you're building a cup, let's say, I don't know, um, and um, or a box or, or anything like that. I'm going to build a cube, for example, and, and let's say you wanted to drop a bunch of balls inside of it and you just wanted them to live there. You just wanted to stack something, you know, whether it was balls, rocks or, or something into uh, another piece of geometry and just make them lie in there all nice and had instead of having to do them by hand um, <clears throat> and then just bake those objects in there after that. Um, this is this is how you do it. There's a very distinct um, specific order that you have to do things in to make this work and this is something that I dealt with a couple times and realized that you have to follow the steps in order to make this work right so I'm creating this this cube object here and then I'm gonna create a sphere I'm gonna make it kinda of small and I'm gonna clone it with the uh, MoGraph cloner and I'm just gonna do a uh, um, I guess we'll do a grid array, see how this works. I'm going to do, um, I don't know if I'll do one tall, maybe I'll do three tall and, um, let's kind of get these in close together and, uh, maybe I'll do more tall just so I can have them all land in the box. So I can show you how this works. That's probably too much. So let's go with three by three and 20 tall. So, okay, here's all my, my MoGraph objects. I'm gonna dump in the box. Um, this way I'll have this box of balls and everything will be um, nicely placed without me having to do it one by one by hand. So, first thing of course on my cloner, I've got to do a simulation tag and give it a rigid body. And that rigid body has to have uh, top level I think um, okay and then on my cube I need to do another simulation tag which is the collider body because it's what this is colliding with if I hit play you can see that it's hitting the box and it's going over that is because on my um, collision tag instead of automatic I need to make this something else usually I'll just go with like static mesh and then you could see it all falls into the box but that's what I want and instead of having to do all of those spheres one by one, uh, you know, place it myself for a project I'm working on. I can just do something like this and get them all nice. The problem with that is then after that, you're not able to manipulate the individual spheres. Um, you know, if you wanted to change it up just a little bit or whatever. So I'm going to show you how to do that and the exact specific order that needs to happen in. Number one, if you have cloners on, you may be using render instances because you know if you have a really complicated project going um, it's really hard not to use render instances because your viewport gets all bogged down so um, use that while you're getting it set up but then the first thing you have to do before you bake any of this not bake but mix down to geometry uh, is you have to turn off render instances because if you don't do this and you mix it all down to geometry it'll just appear as one ball in there um, so these need to be individual elements. So we're going to turn off the render instancing. The second thing that we need to do is uh, click on our tag and we're going to go to the cache and we are going to bake all. And once that bakes, you'll see that we have the full bake. It doesn't have to calculate dynamics anymore. And usually you could just leave it at this if you wanted to. Um, but if you want to, again, in individually manipulate any of these objects in the box, then you're going to need to take this a step further. The uh, next thing you got to do is find the frame where they're all settled in the box or whatever your object is and, and say, okay, that's where I want it. Next step, you go back to your, uh, your dynamics tag and you have this tab at the top for dynamics. This is on your cloners and you turn off enabled for dynamics. That's very important. 
Once that's done, you click on the cloner object that you're using and you go up to the objects menu up here and you say current state to object. Now it creates a copy of that. So here's my copy. Here's the original cloner. You could turn that off, maybe save it for later if you want. I've turned it off just in case we need to go back. But now you can see that every single individual ball is in its right place and they're all individual objects. If you want to move one around, if you want to delete some of them or do something so that you can put another object in the box, you're good to go. That's something that um, kind of took me a little while to figure out just because you have to get the order right. If you miss any of those steps, you'll end up where it won't work or um, it'll go back to frame one or the dynamics will be screwed up or, or whatever it is, it's, it's, it'll get screwed up. If, as long as you follow that order though, you're good to go. And uh, that pretty much covers it. I'm Dave Koss. Thanks for watching. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more, please subscribe on YouTube. We also have a podcast on iTunes, the BroGraph podcast. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and all the uh, social media stuff, Instagram, and of course YouTube and BroGraph.com where you can get links to everything that we do. I'm Dave Koss. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a good one. Later, bros. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning critical components of Cinema 4D and After Effects, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. We give you professional time-saving tips, shortcuts, and lessons that help give you an edge over your fellow designers. Not only this, but our new Brograph talks help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join us for live sessions, check out our crazy Cinema 4D experiments, or just watch our Fun with Brograph series, where we show you practical applications for techniques learned in previous tutorials. Do this from the beginning, and your client is going to respect that, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to respect your time. Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead, all with a slight dash of dry humor peppered in. Real nice banana. Brograph.com, your source for tutorials that will help you thrive in the motion graphics industry. Don't just play around with Cinema 40 and After Effects, master it, and make money by becoming indispensable at your workplace. We don't care how you get here, folks, just get here! Subscribe now to Brograph Tutorials. It's pretty good, I guess.